Hi, how you doing? Justin here. Today we are checking out Eight Days a Week by The Beatles. Really fabulous intermediate level song. Maybe okay for kind of uh, recently graduates of the beginner course kind of level, but uh, it's got a bar chord in it, so that can make it a little bit tricky. Uh, it's an easy bar chord as far as bar chords go, but a bar chord nevertheless. So as usual, I'm going to take you through a real nice, simple look at the chords. First of all, we're going to restrict it to just four down strums to the bar. Make sure that you've got the bar lengths and the chords and all of that sort of stuff sorted out first. Then we'll talk about the rhythm and then I'll take you through that kind of fancy uh, chord thing that you can use for the intro as well, which uh, sounds pretty cool, a little bit tricky getting right up the dusty end there. You'll definitely need a cutaway or an electric guitar if you're going to do that. Okay, so let's go through these chords now, keeping it nice and simple, four down strums to the bar. Again, it's always useful to write these things down, just to write the chords down. I'll always be calling the chords once per bar unless I specify otherwise if we get like more than one chord in a bar. So we're starting off on a D chord. So we got this. Three, four, D, I need your E, B, G chord, then to D, D, and then it's E chord, G, and then to D, B minor, B, G, B, B minor, B, and then E. That's the, the verses and the choruses. So the verse, D, E, G, D, D, E, G, D. Fairly simple eight bar sequence there. The chorus, B minor, G, B minor, E, D, E, G, D. Okay, lots of little patterns there. Can be really helpful to write these things out like four, four bars on a line kind of thing. So you'd have D, E7, G, D, D, E7, G, D. You'll start to see the symmetry there. I mean, that one's just uh, a four bar sequence repeated. But then the next section, the B minor, G, B minor, E, and then D, E7, G, D. So writing it down that way, you know, it'll help you solidify the order of the chords you know and when when you write it down you've got another reference you're not just thinking about it you can start to see the patterns clearer particularly in a, in a tune like this uh, the only other section to look at where well, we got the middle the middle bit so eight days a week I love you eight days a week it's not enough to show I always struggle with the melody for that last little bit, but anyway, it's um, two bars of A, so A days, a second bar to B minor, and it's B. So it's two bars of B minor, you can either strum it once and let it ring out for the two bars, or one, two, three, four, one, two, three, then E, two, three, four, for a second bar of E, G, two, three, four, A, two, three, four, and A. Okay, let's talk about the strumming now. And there's a few different patterns that work, but a really good starting point is just to use Old Faithful. So down, down, up, up, down, 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 up, up, down. It just works. It's really simple. It's the kind of pattern that after you've practiced it a bit, you should find comes fairly naturally, you know, and applying it to this one. So, oh, I need your love, Guess you know it's true. Hope you need my love, Just like I Faithful works real well, but another thing you might like to try is putting on a heavy muted backbeat. So putting a little muted hit on beats two and four. So you'd end up with this one, two, and three, and four. One, two, and three, and four. One, two, and three, and four. Down, mute, up, up, mute. Down, mute, up, up, mute. Down, mute. Okay, there's lessons on the intermediate course about how to do this percussive hit. Okay, this part of the hand has to come down first. You should be able to do it without having this hand on the fretboard. Okay, a lot of people feel like that they can lift the chord up or mute with those fingers, but you should be able to do it just with that hand. So that part of your hand hits the strings first, and then the pick comes down a few, you know, a nanosecond afterwards. Okay, so that's how you want to practice that. So down, mute, up, up, mute. Down, mute, up, up, mute. And oh, I miss your love, babe. Guess you know it's true. Hope you need my love, babe. Just like I need you. Hold me, love me. Hold me and love me. Ain't got nothing but love. OK, 
Okay, it's a really, really nice feel if you want to get involved with that. These certainly aren't the only two strumming patterns you could use, and I would encourage you to go and explore different ways of playing these tunes. You don't even have to think of it as being like exactly like the record. You could be doing, Oh, I need your love, babe. Guess you know it's true. Hope you need my love, babe. Just like I You know, you could be doing this, kind of, I call it picked finger style, but there's lots of different approaches that you could uh, muck around with with a tune like this. And it's really, I think it's an important thing for you guys to be experimenting as well, not just, you know, use the things that I'm teaching you because it's a really good starting point, but then do go off and experiment on your own a bit as well. Um, one thing that I, I wanted to mention there uh, that I forgot to mention when I was talking about the chords was the, the in the chorus, B minor to G, you could either do the B minor to G open, or you could go B minor to G, if you're comfortable with your bar chords holding it for that long, B minor to G is a nice change because the actual shape is exactly the same. You're just kind of moving it diagonally and up one fret, you know, move it up one fret and up one string. So as far as bar chord changes, that one goes, you know, it's fairly simple. Um, and one other thing I notice myself doing is sometimes adding things like sus chords in, particularly on the D. You've got sus4 and sus2 that you could add in as well. Oh, I need your love, babe. Yes, you know it's true. Oh, you need my love, babe. Just like I need you. That, that, that was too much, okay? But uh, there's lots of different sus chords that you could use in there to uh, embellish the, the, the chord sequence as well, which is just another thing to add. You don't want to... With all of these things, if you've got a little spice like that, you don't want to tip the whole jar in, right? You just want to use it sparingly, but be aware that that's something that, uh, you know, intermediate level and, uh, and above players should be exploring. Um, so the last thing I want to mention is this little intro thing. Um, it's just a really nice idea. It's uh, first finger on the 10th fret of the second string, second finger 11th fret of the third string, and third finger... Uh, on the 12th fret of the 4th string. Really, really lovely chord. It's a D add 9 chord. So nothing on the thickest two strings. 12th fret, 11th fret, 10th fret, open. Okay? D add 9. If you move that up two frets, you just end up with a different way of playing an E chord. And then if you move it up again, a further three frets. So first finger will be right up in the 15th fret. So uh, 17, 16, 15, open. Now you would definitely need a cutaway. If you've got a regular acoustic guitar like that, this chord would be nigh on impossible. So, um, but there's a cheat for it, which I'll show you in a second. But um, one, two, three, four. just a really nice kind of a different kind of an intro you could use this in lots of different songs and this would substitute for a D chord most times this would substitute for an E most times and this would substitute for a G most times as well okay so you know feel free to take these ideas and mix them up in other songs as well um, if you've got a cutaway at the 12th fret like a, a classical guitar, even the 12th fret one, the E one's going to be next to impossible. If it's 14th fret, you might find you can do it. And this one, this is really far up. It works just as well an octave lower. So first finger in the third fret. Okay, so five, four, three, open. So in that case. And that also makes for a nice ending. Okay, to do this one. We did this the first time, second time, okay it's just a nice way of ending the tune if you're looking for an ending for it as well. Um, one thing when you're doing these kind of chords that you might want to pay attention to is using the tip of your third finger to just lightly touch the fifth string to try and mute that one. I tend to use my thumb to lean over to mute the thicker string, but if if at least you've muted the fifth string, you'll probably be able to get your strumming accurate enough to not just play uh, to not play the thicker string, and you'll probably be okay. Uh, but it would be difficult to strum those four strings like this and not hit the fifth string. So you do want to use that the tip of the third finger there to mute the fifth string. That would be my little tip 
I think that's about it for this tune. I hope you have a lot of fun exploring it. There'll be a link below to the website where you'll find related lessons on how to use your sus chords and playing with the thumb over and all that sort of stuff, as well as related songs, more songs by the Beatles, more songs at this level, all nicely organized for you there. If you are watching on YouTube, please do hit that subscribe button before you go. I really appreciate your support. I'll see you for plenty more lessons very soon. You take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.